Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Jungle Carbine in Battlefield 5. This is one of the newer weapons added with the Pacific DLC. You can unlock it through the uh, chapter progression tree. It won't take you too long to get there. And this is a medic exclusive weapon. It's a carbine, actually a straight pole bolt. This is a shorter version of basically an Enfield rifle and it is an absolute beast. I love this weapon. Now, it's going to appeal more to this sniper crowd out there. It's very much a pocket sniper rifle, something that can extend the range of the medic and change up the playstyle a bit. The medic is fun with SMGs, but when you get tired of being, say, right up there, the first guy through the door on the front lines, and you wanna maybe drop back a little bit and support your squad, you can use any of the now three available carbines. But the jungle carbine, in my opinion, is, well, the best. It gives you the best range, the best headshot potential, and the best muzzle velocity, allowing you to play very similar to a real bolt action sniper rifle for the recon class. Uh, the only point at which this weapon starts to lose its effectiveness is at like 70, 80 plus meters, where you start losing that ability to one shot headshot and two shot body shot. But up to that range, which quite frankly is extremely far away, this weapon is still an absolute monster. You can use it with iron sights or a variety of optics, but I prefer the three times on here. You can't go any higher than three times if you're hoping for, say, a six times optic, but the three times should get the job done, and it'll kind of remind you of the effective range. If you're having a hard time seeing your opponent's head, then they're probably too far away to get a one-shot headshot anyway. Now let's talk about the stats, and I want to give a big shout out to sim.gg. This is basically the revival of the SimThick website. They've done an excellent job of getting all the Battlefield 5 weapons in there and putting in all the different attachments and allowing you to sort of mix and match so you can see how the stats of a weapon change depending on the progression tree you take. They've done a great job with the website and it's going to allow me to get a bit more in depth with my rep weapon reviews now. So really excited about this. So the muzzle velocity on the jungle carbine is 570 meters per second, significantly faster than its competitors, the Delisle Commando, uh, which only shoots 400 meters per second, but it does have that suppressed shot. And then the Tromboncino, which shoots 500 meters per second. This is basically right up there with a lot of the bolt action muzzle velocities that are already available in the game. So it should feel right at home. Now, I should mention that that is also using the high velocity bullets. For the progression tree on this, I'm gonna go left, 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 and then right. You could go with the quick reload, but enhanced grips giving you a little bit of hip fire freedom in close quarters is something that's nice to have, uh, especially if you're using a three times optic, it's not really practical to ADS and CQB. And the better hip fire you can get, you can turn this into a quick little two shot kill in CQB, it's not going to out damage basically any sort of full auto weapon unless you get a first shot headshot on them. But uh, I just find it's better than having the fast reload. This gun can already carry 10 rounds in its magazine with uh, clip reloads. You can even reload five uh, shots at a time through the clip, clip reload process. And so having a faster reload isn't all that big a deal. If you're relying too much on your reload with this gun to try and get a follow up kill, then you're probably playing a little bit too close to the front lines, or you should just be switching to your or sidearm to deal with follow-up or close quarter threats. Also, the machine bolt for the faster rate of fire is a very nice upgrade to have for this weapon. It does have the slowest rate of fire out of all of the uh, medic carbines in the game, but I feel that the rate of fire is adequate, especially when it is still a one-shot headshot kill. You can get two pretty quick body shots in CQB as well. Not quite as fast as, say, the Commando, but then again, those weapons are geared for slightly different ranges. Now, the maximum damage on this weapon is 56, so that gives you a little bit of leeway. Not every single shot you land on your target has to be some sort of like upper chest shot or something like that to deal maximum damage. You can still get a two-shot kill even if your shots land on weird parts of the body. And this damage carries all the way out to 75 meters where it starts to drop off, and then at extreme ranges, you'll go all the way down to 40 damage. So at extreme ranges, it will be a three shot kill. And I don't recommend using this weapon at extreme ranges unless you just know you got an easy kill or there's a stationary target. You can do a headshot body shot for a quick two shot, but still right around the 80 meter mark away is pretty dang far. And that's gonna still allow you to be very effective in these sort of aggressive medium range pushes. Also the weapon being named the jungle carbine, obviously it was being used in sort of jungly environments during World War II 
2, which definitely existed, not just in island hopping, but also in uh, some of the Asian battles that happened in World War II, which would be kind of cool if uh, DICE made some maps around that. But I got to say that this weapon actually performs phenomenally on Pacific Storm. Just something about creeping around in the bushes, allowing you to have a little bit maybe more time to engage your enemies. And because you're not putting out in a, a fully automatic stream of bullets, it can be a lot harder for enemies to locate you. Also, as a medic, you can heal back up quickly, which makes it a, an excellent situation for sniper dueling or dealing with long range threats. Pacific Storm also offers you a lot of perfect engagement ranges. Basically, when you're coming over the, the ledge of a hill that maybe your team has taken and you're looking at the next objective it's probably about 70 80 meters away which is going to put you in that one shot headshot kill range plus you're going to find a lot of people as you start scanning through the bushes that are just prone trying to get some sneaky shots off on you and if you're good at scanning and locating your enemies you can get a lot of freebie headshots with this weapon now let's talk about the weaknesses of the jungle carbine it's rate of fire even with the machine bolts you're only going to be able to get this thing up to 99 rounds per minute which seems decent for most situations but if you start getting a lot of targets that are moving around juxing changing uh directions uh unpredictably it's going to be difficult to kill those people. And so I found the weapon actually most effective when you're playing on the assaulting team is you're gonna get a lot more stationary defenders, which will give you uh, quicker follow-up shots or easier headshots in general. Again, this is highly dependent on the map. Also, the weak side is just playing on maps that don't give you long enough sight lines to make this weapon effective. In close quarters, you're gonna lose to every SMG in the game, pretty much every assault rifle in the game, most light machine guns, I mean, pretty much everything you run into uh, in closer ranges is going to be better than you. Unless, of course, your very first shot is a headshot on those targets, but you know what? Not everybody is Stota, and God, I hope DICE doesn't balance this weapon based on his gameplay, because then they're just going to nerf this thing to the point where it's not fun to use anymore. This is a high-skill, high-reward weapon. There's no doubt about that. If you don't feel like you got high enough skill to nail lots of headshots with a sniper rifle, uh, let alone a bolt-action sniper rifle that's geared more towards medium range, then you'll find this weapon frustrating. If you like medic SMGs and uh, you think this is a replacement for it, it is absolutely not. You can't just switch off of an SMG and expect to get similar performance or fight in similar situations for uh, decent results. You're gonna have to change up your play style a lot. It's also gonna make you uh, revive different targets a bit or maybe strategically pick your revives a little bit better. The problem I have sometimes is that when you're not extremely close to a revivable target, they'll just bleed out really fast because they don't think anybody's coming for them. So sometimes you'll be sprinting towards targets and they'll just bleed out before you even show up, which kind of sucks when you hang back a little bit with the medic class. Now, if you played with the Commando Carbine or even the M28 Tromboncino or Tromboncino, however, however that's pronounced, uh, and you didn't quite enjoy those weapons that much, you might actually still really like this one. Personally, I wasn't as big of a fan of the Commando or the M28. I thought they were decent and interesting weapons, but for the most part, I found the SMGs far more effective. Maybe it's just because uh, Pacific Storm offers uh, new gameplay opportunities that haven't been as readily available on some of the other maps out there. But I got to say that this weapon's muzzle velocity and damage drop off makes it far more attractive because it gets much closer to the performance of a standard sniper rifle. And I absolutely love sniping in Battlefield 5. So this kind of bridges the gap better than the other weapons that have been available to the medic. And I absolutely love that. I put it way above the other carbines in the game just because I like sniper gameplay more and if i can replicate sniper gameplay with a medic class then that gives me some really interesting potentials i can back out of a sniper duel and heal up and engage somebody else or even re-engage that sniper with uh basically mitigating the the next shot body shot as a kill so it's quite nice and affords me many many dual victories Anyway, I highly recommend going through the progression process to get this weapon. If you do miss the uh, chapter rewards this time around, I think you'll be able to buy it later for company coins, so it won't be that big of a deal. But uh, this is absolutely a weapon worth unlocking, worth testing out, and I'm looking forward to trying it out on other maps down the road. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about this weapon if you've unlocked it. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.